Let's talk about what the perfect software is for your photos. There's a lot of choice out there, but which one is the right for you? Now, first of all, we have to answer the question, why do you even need different tools? Shouldn't you be able to do everything in just one software? I would say no, because every developer out there has a certain philosophy and a certain goal in mind for their software. In the way it is used, the workflow it is used for, the style it can create, the look that results from using that software. But as a result of that, the tools are specialized in this way, but make it harder to use it in other workflows or create other styles and results with that same software. So to make your life easier, it is good to try out different tools and also figure out what the philosophy behind that tool is. And I will show you today how to find that out. So let's start with the amazing Affinity Photo. It's a competition to Photoshop that is a lot more affordable, but at the same time, very powerful. Now here's the way to figure out what a software is meant for. Look at the marketing materials. On the Affinity Photo site, we see as the very first picture, not a photo, but a digital artwork of a jellyfish. Then the next one is a photo that is beautifully edited. And after that, we have another digital artwork. And here you can even see the software with a lot of layers in there. This also tells you a lot about how the software is meant to be used. After that, we see another artwork that is a photo composite made of a lot of layers. And then we see some product photography here, some street photography, and then we already come to the next artwork made with a lot of layers. So what this tells us is this software is specifically made to give you a lot of freedom, but also to work on individual artworks in a very dedicated way. This is why you need all these layers. This is why you need the freedom of the tools and arranging and combining the tools as you want to. Now let's go to Luminar AI. And here you can immediately see that the head of the homepage is working on a portrait with sliders. And the sliders, as you can see here, are built into the interface. So first of all, they are the same sliders for every photo you work on. But secondly, the sliders have specific names that are named after the result you are getting, not after the technique that is used. So for example, one says here, Iris Flare. You don't really know what it is doing, but it gives you the described result. This is very important. Let's scroll down a little bit more. And you can see here that this has a very high emphasis on using AI for specific purposes like the body, the face, skin, atmosphere, the sky, augmented sky even. So this tells you the software will support you with an AI to reach certain goals without you needing to understand the process. So this is mainly built for a specific idea of beauty that is probably very mainstream because the AI has to be trained on a set of what is more or less beautiful. Let's scroll down a little bit more and here we see the actual workflow in action. So they imagine you to start out with a single photo, select a style and then edit that style to improve it to get the result you want to have. In the next step, they imagine that you copy that style over to the rest of the photos from that series and download or export it afterwards. You can see here all of these photos have the same beautiful look, but also the look is similar for that photos. So that means this software is specifically made with a very smooth and easy workflow in mind, made for a series of pictures so you can share them on social media. Let's look at the next software, DxO Photo Lab. The first thing they tell you is that this is for raw processing. When you scroll down, you see pictures of night skies, you see pictures of animals here. And when you look at what is promoted here, compared to what Luminary Eye tells you, this says, for example, sharpness, and you see a very slight difference. Then we go to distortion. Here you see more of a difference, but the main goal is here to make the picture more realistic and nature-like. The next one is chromatic aberration. Again, the change is very subtle. 
And the next one is vignetting. Here you have a bigger change, but again, the ideal is to make the picture as realistic and true to the original state as possible. So this is not kind of an Instagram social media look that you want to reach with that. This is to fix and correct your photo and make it look beautiful. So you can also see that a lot of photos that we see here are documentary style photos from people of different cultures, from animals, from landscapes of faraway countries, all these kind of things. And here you see even amazing nature scenes with this boat here and the waves coming towards the boat. So this is what that software is made for to give you realistic results for raw editing. Next, let's go to one of my all time favorites, the Nick collection. And this is a little bit more complex because it's a collection of a lot of plugins that you get with that. They have specific uses. But again, if you look at the marketing material you have here, you can see from the photos what kind of idea they have for their picture. So a lot of that in Nick collection often says this kind of national geographic style. So there's a little bit of that documentation style in there, but from the expression larger than life, more powerful in the expression. And you also see that with the tools that you can use here. For example, when we look into silver effects, you see very iconic, beautiful photos here. But at the same time, you see there's a lot of noise in here. So this is leaning towards more of the analog kind of expression, analog kind of effect. When you go down here, you again see sliders in here. Again, this leans toward creating presets so you can apply the same style to multiple photos. When we scroll down here more, again, you can see this kind of storytelling, National Geographic kind of style in the photos that you have here. So very beautiful, but also you can see here, for example, in this, that you can do localized adjustments to manipulate the way that the light flows and the way that the structure, the sharpness, all of these kind of things can happen in the photos. You can see here saturation, structure, shadow. This is to bring out the character and tell the story through the photos. Again, you can also see that when you look at the other tools, let's go here to color effects, where we have some portraits here. We also have some city scenes. And then we have here some sliders that also help us figure out what is going on and what the idea is. So in this case, you can see the ideal here is not to make it as natural as possible. It is to make a natural scene as beautiful as possible. When you click on tools, you can also see the variety of things that are offered here to you. But there's a little side detail that also helps you understand what that software is for. Because when you slide over this info box here, it tells you the specific camera and lens and setting used to make that photo here and also for this photo over here. So this tells you in comparison, for example, to the Luminar website, that this is made for people who are very specific about the photography and the gear that are using and the adjustments to create some artistic, beautiful outputs. Now let's look at Adobe Photoshop, one of the big giants when it comes to digital art and photography. But when you look at the website, you see one thing right away. Design, a lot of design. Here we have brushes that are writing text, that are coloring text. You can see here, this is for a social media post. Here we have another kind of a website design. They are doing some kind of retouching here. Then we remove a background over here. We do some digital painting over here. Uh, some adjustment of fonts to make them more beautiful and actually kind of paint a 3D style. So a lot of that, again, as you can see here, is this kind of design is working with a lot of layers, is working with composites and compositions, all these kind of things that you have already seen on the Affinity Photo site. So this, again, is a software that is built around individual artworks that you want to invest a lot of time in, working with layers, choosing the tools you want to use, but also needing to understand how to use these tools specifically. So again, this is not for the fast and easily streamlined workflow as we've seen it in Luminar AI. 
Next, we have Lightroom Classic or also Lightroom Cloud. They are a bit different, but they are also built towards the same kind of purpose. So when we look at the website, again, not too much marketing material, but here you can directly see a certain kind of look. You can also see the sliders that I used here to adjust that, what their names are, how they are used. And this again gives you an idea that this will use the same sliders for all of your pictures so you can create presets and copy that over to the rest of your photos. So again, you can see that we have a software that is made for a workflow where you want to edit a lot of photos, but also in this case, you can see here, we can apply presets for that where you want to quickly adjust the photos, export them so you can post them online. Down here in this video, we can see also different devices that this works on. So you can see someone using the phone, but also a tablet and a computer to use Lightroom. So this means it is at the same time very mobile, but also very easy to use. So you have a quick workflow to create these specific looks. One thing that is specific for Adobe products is they have a certain color and a certain look to their pictures and the sliders in the color adjustment are made in that way. They balance between two color values rather than giving you the full range so that you can create certain looks. The website doesn't 100% show you that, but I'm telling you right now that the Adobe look is pretty specific, but also very famous on social media. So if you want to have that classic look you see often on social media, most of that is done with Lightroom. Here we have the last one in our list and that is Capture One. And directly from the marketing material from the video, you can see this is built mostly for professionals, but also mostly for studio photography, because as you can also see, it is meant to be used while you shoot. So you can overlay the live shooting with other overlays, with other elements that you have photographed before that you want to combine afterwards for a design, for a composite, for an artwork, so that you know that the model is standing right, that the lighting is right for the effect to combine them perfectly afterwards when you have all the layers together. So this is very much a studio software. It can also be used for other things. But when you look through the website, you see that almost all of the photos are studio photos, not so much landscape or any kind of other thing. So this is what this software is kindled towards. When you compare this again to the Nick collection page, you see here a lot of outdoor and nature photos different use, different purpose, but also different kind of end results this software is built towards. So here is my advice for you. First of all, try a lot of different software. All of those have demos that you can download so you can try it for free and see if the software is good for the style you want to create, for the purpose of what you photograph, but also for the workflow on how you work. And look at the marketing materials because as you have seen, they give you a very good idea what the software is built for and what the tools are built around as a result, as a style, as a creative process. That's it for today. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye.